Hi, I'm Frank. Yeah. Welcome to the channel, guys. So today we're gonna be talking about the future of the Xbox brand and the dream scenario I see them having for their July reveal in terms of hardware, games, and just their overall roadmap for what Xbox can become. Because realistically, if they employ these ideas I'm about to talk about, I could see them taking over the gaming landscape for the next decade. So let's talk about it. Also, if you guys wanna hear more content like this in terms of gaming news and my opinions on games and other things I'm interested in, check me out at twitch.tv slash franklygaming or absolutely demolish that like button. What the fuck? But what is the dream Xbox scenario? For a little under a decade now, Xbox has on most accountable fronts been getting walloped by the PlayStation. The PlayStation reveal has more views, they have more followers, and they have more big AAA games that people know of and love. So how is Xbox supposed to come back from that? What can they possibly do to win back the hearts of those who they lost. I remember I used to have an Xbox 360 when I was in high school and I used to play COD with and Halo with all my friends every day after school. And now that I'm on PC, I don't really have a dog in the race anymore, but I've seen from the outside how much Xbox has really lost its, its spark that it had when I first started gaming on the 360. But I think that could all be about to change. Because for all of the struggles that Xbox has been through recently, there has been one shining beacon of light. And that beacon is an adorable 52 year old Chad named Phil Spencer. And the thing that's so great about Phil isn't his lovable personality or his impeccable fashion sense. It's his vision. And this is finally the moment that the Xbox brand, after years of building up, can show that vision. And I have a dream for what that could possibly be, and this is what it is. As we all know, currently Xbox has Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, where for $15 a month, you can get Xbox Live Gold, access to free games every month, all first party titles free, and future access to things like backwards compatibility, which is already in place, xCloud, and HDR rendering for future consoles. But why is this so special? Because while this is a great deal as it stands right now, this is specifically what can push Xbox to become the Netflix of gaming, which is what they've really been not only coming out and saying they're aiming for, but quite obviously doing so as well with all of their releases. What I envision as the future of Xbox is something much grander though, where these sorts of services that Xbox has been building towards can finally all be put together into one giant package that will change the industry forever. Here's the best way to think about it. So while we don't know the prices of the next gen Xbox or PlayStation yet, it's safe to assume that the PlayStation 5 will be around four to $500 on everything we've seen. With the PlayStation 5 discless edition, probably coming in around $100 cheaper, respectively. But on the Xbox end, we also don't know. The Xbox Series X likely ranges between four to $500 as well. But this is where everything changes. Because while we don't know if there truly exists another next-gen Xbox, all sources are pointing to it, likely an Xbox Series S. And this new console, just like the PlayStation equivalent, will be a discless online equivalent to the console. But here's where things get interesting. Because Microsoft has the potential with this console to change gaming forever. And here's how they do it. Instead of charging 
say three to four hundred dollars or even slightly cheaper for this other console with lower power specs and no disk drive what if microsoft charged nothing you heard that right a completely free console but how would they do that and why can they do it when playstation can't it's because they are building an ecosystem while PlayStation and all the other console manufacturers have been building consoles. You see, what Xbox has now that no other manufacturer does is Xbox Game Pass Ultimate and all the services within that envelope. Here's what they do. You give everyone an Xbox Series S for free. You can pick it up at any store, Best Buy, online, Amazon. You get it for free, but you sign a two-year contract that you will sign up for Xbox Game Pass Ultimate plus a $5 charge per month to have the console. So for $20 a month for two years straight, you get an Xbox Series S that can play all the new games at high fidelities with HDR and new rendering techniques, backwards compatibility, the entire Game Pass catalog, Xbox Gold, and this can transfer right over to your PC, your tablet, your phone, whatever device Microsoft allows you to play it on, all in one seamless integration. And not only that, but if they were to do something like this, that would get you in the ecosystem. Imagine paying for this service for two years straight after you've signed a contract to do so. Most people probably aren't gonna terminate at that point. They will have been in the Xbox ecosystem playing their games for two years straight. And to think they'll just pull out at that point is pretty naive. A plan like this would be genius for Microsoft, not only because it makes so much logical sense for them building towards the Netflix of gaming, but also because their competition would be years behind even trying to catch up. Imagine a world where every two years you can be upgrading your Xbox Series S to the newest model, just like an iPhone. They could upgrade just the GPU and CPU every year, and maybe every other year change up the look of the console just a little bit. And you could get all of this, plus so much more, for just $20 a month. Really think about how much you spend on games per year. With rumors that games are going to start costing $70 for AAA in the next gen, and the, just the fact that people buy so much shovelware they don't even play on, say, Steam or Xbox Live or PSN, Think about how much money you are putting into gaming per year on games you might not even play. But with this new service that Xbox could potentially bring out, you could just pay $20 a month to play hundreds and hundreds, potentially thousands of games and lots of new AAAs from all the new studios from Microsoft from the comfort of your living room, your desk, or even on your phone on the toilet. This is the dream that Xbox has been building towards. They had visions of it early on on Xbox One, but they failed miserably. They tried to integrate TV and other services people didn't care about. But now, it's all about the games and the services they have created, including Game Pass, backwards compatibility, soon to be xCloud, enhanced features for HDR on new titles, and just overall their entire portfolio of games they've managed to assemble so far looks astounding and they can complete this journey by creating a free xbox series s or whatever they want to call it the lower tier xbox that will allow anyone to get into xbox gaming for the low fee of 20 dollars a month and allow power users who want more fidelity to get the Xbox Series S, leave that for the higher tiers at around four to $500 for those who so choose. But at the end of the day, the key thing that could differentiate Xbox from its competition and the dream scenario they could put themselves in is one of combining all of their services into an Apple and Netflix-like model where you are upgrading your console on a semi-yearly ba basis as well as having a multitude of services you subscribe to that you never want to leave from. Xbox, for over a decade now, has slowly been building the groundwork and foundation for an ecosystem that likely will change gaming forever. And it's finally their time to show to the world whether they've done it. 
And with the upcoming release of things like xCloud and the next gen Xboxes, this is the perfect time to make a statement. Now, having said that though, it's important that Xbox focuses as well on the thing that will make this all work, the games. Because if Xbox doesn't have good exclusives or good third party AAA games coming to Game Pass, this entire plan will fall apart. Because at the end of the day, you're only going to get a new console from Xbox and join the ecosystem if there's games you want to play. But it seems Microsoft has learned from the trials of old, as they have acquired many new studios, in which I'll talk about in a future video. And hopefully in their upcoming presentation, we'll get to see come to fruition all of the games they have been working on. And that's yet to be seen, but it is a vital aspect of this entire plan as well. Xbox truly is a forward-thinking company, and it's never been more obvious. Because while all of its competition has been focused on just making games and making good consoles, something that's been proven to work in the past, Xbox looked to the future. A future where... Just like with TV shows on Netflix, games will have Game Pass. And just like where your phone you upgrade every few years, for your console, you will do the same. Or for your PC, you may do the same. They envision a world where no matter what device you're on, potentially even Nintendo and PlayStation devices in the future, we've seen rumblings already. They envision a future where no matter where you're gaming, no matter where you are, whether you're on a phone or a super high-end PC or console, you will have Game Pass, you will have access to xCloud, you will have access to backwards compatibility, to Game Pass, to Xbox exclusives across their entire catalog. Because at the end of the day, we're past the console age. It's no longer about just selling as many units of a console as you can and then selling games on top of that. It's about who can grab the ecosystem, who can be involved in every minute detail of gaming. And for the first time ever, we have a company on the verge of doing so. But we'll have to wait and see if they can truly accomplish it. And I hope more than ever that this vision that I see for them, which they quite obviously are showing is their vision as well, can truly come full circle. And we can see a world where Xbox makes a huge splash. Because as always, more competition is great. And this will force Sony and Nintendo to stay on their feet and to go forward themselves. If there's anything we've learned from the past console generations, it's that those who are, are kicked and put on their ass and fail are the ones that come back stronger. The PlayStation 3 was a failure by most accounts, but the PlayStation 4 was an astounding success. And now it's Xbox's turn. And this time, they have something much bigger than just a new console plan. Something that could change gaming fundamentally forever. But I guess we'll have to wait and see. So yeah, guys, thanks so much for watching. I, I have to say that these Xbox and PlayStation videos have been really fun to make, which is ironic because I don't even have a console. I just play on PC. Um, but looking at gaming as a whole and where the industry is going is so interesting to me. And hopefully you guys enjoyed it as well. I'd love to hear your guys' comments down below on your opinions on where the next generation is going, where Xbox is going, where PlayStation is going, where Nintendo is going and maybe even where the PC is going to end up. So thank you guys so much for watching today. As I said, if you want to watch me live and talk about topics like this, I love doing this on stream. Check me out at twitch.tv slash franklygaming. I also try to stream on YouTube every once in a while just to say hi to you guys that don't know me on Twitch. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I hope you all have a fantastic day, and I will see you.